In our research, we have found definite and universal levels of development in moral thought. Lawrence Kohlberg was an educator, a psychologist, and a philosopher, and he is widely regarded as following in the footsteps of Socrates, John Piaget, and John Dewey. He worked on the development of moral judgment in children and adults using a cognitive developmental approach involving Piagetian stage theory. He also worked on moral behavior, notions of just communities, and democratic action dominated his work. His influence on educational practice can be seen in educational curricula on moral development and in models for school administration and governance. He also had an influence beyond the educational sphere. His work impacted other areas of adult development, uh, community-based education, religious education, prison education, and education in the professions. Kohlberg's project spanned traditional disciplinary boundaries. He combined descriptions of empirical reality with normative philosophical principles of justice and fairness. He was an objective researcher and advocate of democratic and liberal values. He wrote, the central characteristic of my theory or research program has been its interdisciplinary nature, using empirical, psychological, and anthropological data to make philosophical claims, and using philosophic assumptions to define and interpret psychological, anthropological, and educational data. Kohlberg became interested in morality and moral education due to his experiences of Nazi tyranny during his time in school and college. He stated that this interest arose in part as a response to the Holocaust and the slow but continuing effort of world society to make some moral sense of it. He was an undergraduate at the University of Chicago where he read Kantian ethics, political philosophies of Locke, Jefferson and John Stuart Mill related to universal human rights. During his graduate studies in psychology, he began formulating his theory of moral development based on Piaget and Dewey. In 1958, Kohlberg completed his doctorate, which focused on the development of modes of moral thinking and choice among adolescents. After six years in the psychology department of the University of Chicago, he transferred to the Graduate School of Education at Harvard in 1968. And this is where he completed the majority of his research and writing until his death in 1987. At Harvard, he trained groups of students and researchers who continued to expand and critique his work. And he conducted pilot programs of moral educations in schools, uh, prisons, and other institutions. The two foci of his work were theoretical and empirical research of moral development and the establishment of just communities. He worked on producing models of schools and prisons, which built upon democratic principles of justice and fairness, which would represent the most developed stages of moral thinking. The notion of moral development is central to education, and it goes back at least as far as Plato Socrates, whose dialogue with Mino focused on the question of whether virtue can be taught, comes from practice, or arises from natural aptitude or instinct. So this question is central to civilized society and the lives of individuals. Without virtue or morals, societies would degenerate into a Habesian war of all against all, as can be seen in totalitarian regimes throughout history. Kohlberg stated that values motivate behavior and morality, and thus they're central to everyday decisions. Moral judgment and thinking are second nature, whether done consciously or not. Since Plato, philosophers and educators have proposed different answers to the question posed in the Mino. Kohlberg identified three broad streams of Western educational thought. The first school of thought was Romanticism, and this can be characterized by Jean-Jacques Rousseau, or can be seen in A.S. Neal's Summer Hill movement. The other schools of thought are cultural transmission and progressivism. Romanticism held that what comes from within the child is the most important aspect of development, allowing the child's inner good to come to the fore and the inner bad under control. And this involved a permissive pedagogical environment. Cultural transmission believes that the primary task of education is the transfer of information, rules and values from one generation to the next to ensure stability and to preserve the achievements of previous generations. Behavioristic theories make up this stream of thinking. 
The final school of thought is uh, progressivism, and this was the school of thought embraced by Kohlberg. He believed that romanticism uncritically assumes that whatever inborn tendencies a child possesses ought to be supported and that cultural transmission ideologies simply replicate the societal status quo. Progressivism stresses the dialectic interplay between the child and the environment. Education should nourish the natural interaction between a child and a society or environment. This aim requires an educational environment that actively stimulates development through the presentation of resolvable but genuine problems or conflicts. Educative experiences should make the child think. Think in ways which organize cognition and emotion. The acquisition of knowledge results in an active change in patterns of thinking brought upon by experiential problem solving situations. The progressive sees the acquisitions of moral morality as an active change in patterns of response to problematic social situations. Kohlberg stressed the unity of cognitive and moral development. There is a link between cognitive and moral development and the affective and intellectual do domains. The development of logical and critical thought central to cognitive education finds its larger meaning in the broad set of moral values. Kohlberg's theory was based on Piaget's approach. So here are the main tenets of his theory. Number one, cognition in general and moral reasoning in particular are structured in the mind in the form of schemata mental structures that are used to perceive and make sense of everyday experience. Each schema is based on assumptions about the nature of world and reality, and it is the schema which determines how individuals perceive reality. Schemata exist from the earliest childhood onwards and never stop changing or becoming more refined. Development means change in mental structure. New experiences are either assimilated, that means they are integrated into existing schemata or accommodated, that means these experiences force the creation of new schemata for understanding. Cognitive development occurs through assimilation and accommodation, through integration of experience in existing mental structures and creation of new and more elaborate ones. Number two, cognitive and moral development occurs as children and adults move through a series of stages, each successively more sophisticated, each representing a structured whole for making sense of experience. Individuals move through stages in an invariant sequence, they do not skip stages, rarely regress to earlier ones, and incorporated patterns of thinking of previous stages into the newly acquired one. Development and maturation occurs as a result of cognitive disequilibrium, the experience of situations that cannot be adequately understood at the present stage. Number three, higher stages are better in the sense that they allow individuals to make sense of experiences in more comprehensive ways. Not all individuals attain the higher stages of development, although stage development correlates with age, at least during the early stages of cognitive development. Stage development can be retarded, but not accelerated. The six stages and three levels of moral development. Pre-conventional level one consists of stage one, that is punishment and obedience orientation, and stage two, instrumental relativist orientations. Conventional level two consists of Stage three, interpersonal concordance orientation, and stage four, society maintaining orientation. And the post-conventional or principle level three consists of stage five, social contract orientation, and stage six, universal ethical principles. In defining the post-conventional, he drew on social contract theory and the work of philosopher John Rawls. At each stage of development, individuals will, will reason about what is right and why it is right in a different way. So for instance, individuals at stage one, if they are asked, why is stealing from a friend wrong? They would answer, oh, if we are caught, we will be punished. At stage three, respondents might answer, stealing will harm the trust relationship with friends. Individuals at stage five would answer, that there is an implicit contract among members of society to uphold the right to property and to act in mutually beneficial ways. Kohlberg's research focused on development of methods to measure and assess the validity of his theory. He developed the moral judgment interview, which was a protocol and scoring manual involving semi-structured in interviews on hypothetical moral dilemmas, and participants were asked to decide and morally justify some course of action. Using scoring guidelines, it was possible to determine the stage of moral reasoning of the interviewee. 
These were the results of a 20 year study and subjects were interviewed every three years. The results showed stage progression step by step as predicted by the theory. He also carried out research to assess the cross-cultural validity of the theory involving 40 Western and non-Western countries. And this showed increases in moral judgment with age and education and confirmed the majority of the stages of the stages of moral reasoning, pointing to the universality of the theory. Moral education, the research in this found that such programs promote gains in moral reasoning. What was the impact of Kohlberg's theory? His work during the 70s and 80s primarily centered on the practical implications of his moral theory. It led to curriculum development and reform in schools and universities and experiments in education, democracy in prisons, schools and the community. His work attracted responses from Habermas and Scheffler, social scientists, collaborators and former students commented on his work, extending research and theory, and posing alternative and competing explanations and theoretical frameworks. Of interest to adult ed educators is the application of the cognitive developmental thinking to professional development and to development in domains other than justice reasoning across the lifespan and at the workplace. Schrader stated that Kohlberg had his critics, but his ideas warrant consideration and provide a starting point for new ideas. Kohlberg welcomed dialogue and controversy. He believed that without cognitive conflict and dialogue, we cease to develop.